everyone. My name is Yu Chen. I'm currently a student at Columbia University MA Statistics program. So in this video, I'm going to introduce what is data science. So data is everywhere nowadays. It's con constantly being collected through, for example, smartphones or embedded systems. And we, the data storage is inexpensive. We have compute power readily available and rapidly increasing. Computer clusters are available to enable parallelism and special architectures developed for machine learning operations. These increased ability to collect, store, and process data has led to a revolution in how we do things in almost every field from biological science to social science, humanities, political science, policy, marketing, and so on. But just because we have the data doesn't imply we understand it. Data must be processed to derive the information, make models, enable predictions, and make diagnosis. So the essence of this course is that we want to use the data to develop models using machine learning and other algorithms. So the key question in data science is how do we explain and predict the world? The desire to make sense of the world is not new. In some domains such as physics, we have well-defined models to help us make predictions. For example, we have Newton's laws, the theory of relativity, and etc. But in other fields that we don't have good models, such as human behavior, biology, we have to use statistical strategies to come up with appropriate models. Data science is the process that we create and refine models in domains where the underlying principles may not be understood. Here's the outline of the topics we're going to discuss in this video. What is data science? Considerations around big data. What does analytics involve? And disclaimer and recap. If you do a word cloud for data science, you can get something like this. Of course, machine learning is very important, but we have other important things such as some statistical techniques and tools such as R and Python and databases such as uh, SQL. And we have some visualizations tools. The idea of this is that machine learning is, is part of much bigger ecosystems and must be used at scale. So um, from the previous cloud, word cloud, we can see that data science is interdisciplinary. It requires domain experts to understand what and where the data is and what questions are important to ask. Mathematician, it requires mathematicians and statisticians to understand modeling and inference, computer scientists to build systems and design algorithms and methods for analyze. Uh, visualization experts and storytellers to effect effectively communicate results and policy and legal experts to understand the broader social context. Data science takes ideas from computer science, statistics, and mathematics and applies them to science, economics, sociology, business, or law. So in this course, we will initially focus on the technical and data manipulation aspects of data science. We know that data science is interdisciplinary and requires experts in different domains. 
So the broader topics of data science is not what we are going to talk about in this course. We'll mainly focus on data analytics and later we will get to the broader social context. So this is our focus of this course. We're going to focus on managing and creating models from the data at scale. We will touch on many related techniques and issues such as machine learning, distributed computing, distributed algorithms, and parallel computation. We will also leverage standard tools and platforms. Our focus is on the foundations of machine learning and cloud platforms. So this is a typical workflow for data analysis. We have the raw data that may comes from different systems or organizations over here. And we need to process these raw data to clean them and regularize them into structured into in integrated data. And then these integrated data will be put in a form and in which there are features can be extracted to help make predictions. So these two steps, we're going to talk about these two steps next. Considerations around big data, structure, cleaning, and linking. So sampling is one of the most important factors in determining the accuracy of the results. If we think of database as a closed world, we have a fixed and well-prepared data. We know the uh, size of our data, like we know the numbers of our employees and we know how much salary they gain. So everything is well-prepared. But for data science, it's an open world. We, may, we might be given incomplete observations and incomplete samples, and data might be collected for one purpose and reused for another purpose. So there are additional issues of how representative the data is for the given research question. This we're going to talk about this later, but now we will assume that the data has been collected and we'll consider that what must be done to put it in a form in which analyze can be performed. So this is the uh, first two steps of the workflow chart we just discussed these two steps, these two first steps, raw data and structured data. So let's take cats as an example. So there are images, genomic information, and articles about cats. These are the raw data that we have. And we want to bring all this information together, wrangling, wrangled it, and bring it to a form that we can be used to develop a model to recognize various types of cats. So our goal is to take the raw data into structured data over which analyze can be performed to create knowledge. So images and genes and text are our raw data and we want to use this raw data to get um, structured data that we have specific kind of features to determine what type of cats um, we get. And linked data is one of the type of data we often heard about the entities, which is the real world objects and, and the features of the entities. 
but sometimes it is the relationship between the entities that are important. For example, the friend relationships in Facebook. We commonly represent relationships between entities as a graph. So this is the graph. And with nodes being the entities, and the edges being the relationships. We can then use relationships to make recommendations. For example, who you might friend or what type of music you might like to listen to. In doing so, you might look at properties of entities as well as paths between entities or connected components of entities. So this applies well beyond social networks to areas such as genomics. Another type of data is knowledge graphs. So this is the centerpiece of what Google used to aid search. It captures the concepts of a domain and relationships between these concepts. For example, um, this is not showing on this graph, but we might have Barack Obama and Donald Trump as our leaves of a knowledge graph. And we know that there are certain things that these two people have in common. For example, being president. Being president is a concept we could have in knowledge graph. With Obama and Trump both being instances, we could also talk about some of their dissimilarities being in different political parties. You, you can use knowledge graph to disambiguate and impose structures over entities. Uh, knowledge graph can use and is being used to improve search. Suppose we are searching for Michael Jordan and there are several different people named Michael Jordan. So how do, does the system know which one you're looking for? This, your browsers will record or collect some of your information and it will go through your search history and looks for which one you are most likely to be interested in. And in this way, they can find um, the, the, the Michael Jordan that you're looking for.